Hello everyone, I'm Said Mandegar. Welcome back to yet another tutorial. So great to have you here. In this video, I'm gonna introduce you a real-time rendering engine called DeFi Render. I recently started using it and I would say it's amazing. This shot is taken by DeFi Render. The output size is more than 6K. And the point is, the render time was less than 20 minutes. Unbelievable. I highly recommend this engine. Alright. First, let's go to their official website. Download this application for free. You can also click on see pricing to purchase this application. Let's click on free download. Once you click on download for free, the download starts automatically. Let me stop it for now. Down below there are some more you can visit. You can find the answers to your questions here. And here are some references you can download for free to practice with. Or you can download my scene through the link I put in the description. Anyway. To link this rendering engine to your 3D application, you will need a plugin. Here is a list of all 3D applications that D5 Render supports. In my case, I would choose 3ds Max. As you see, this plugin supports latest version of 3ds Max. Once the downloads are complete, you will have two set up to install. First, you need to install the D5 application and then install the D5 converter plugin in order to load D5 render inside 3ds Max interface. Once you install them, you need to run the 3ds Max as administrator. Alright, now you see D5 converter here. And also a panel that includes all the required assets to this engine. Let me open a project. Now I start importing it into D5 Render by pressing the play button on D5 panel. It takes a few seconds to load the app and a few minutes to import your scene into D5. This is the first look of your scene when it loads the project. It immediately starts to render real time. I'm gonna navigate around and introduce you some part of it before I dive into more details like lighting, texturing and rendering. Here, you can change the preview quality based on your hardware. In high quality mode, you will see all the details, highlights and shadows. You can also turn off and on the real time mode here. Here we have some menus like most applications. They include some cool features. Let's explore the assets now. Here you see a full list of supported materials you can download for free to use them in your scene. I will explain how to do it and how to manage that material in the next videos. I used some of them and I would say they are very high quality materials. Let's explore and download one of them. For example, this one. You can also change the preview mode to see more at first glance. Mm. 
You can find some cool objects too. Click on this icon to see the options. A sky, filter, view, and list covers all you need for setting up the scene before you start rendering. A sky includes Geo and Sky, which are like the sun, and HDRI mode so they could cover all kind of main lighting sources. If you made any change to your scene like different camera angle, you can add or update it here, and then you can choose between them before I start rendering. Here they include two types of navigations, 3D mode and walkthrough mode like the most 3D applications. And on the render menu you can choose different output modes like photo, panorama or video. Let's choose photo. Here you see the options like adjust the final settings such as field of view, scale and size. You can change the size to any other resolution as well. Press the lock icon to fix. Once you press the export button, it asks you for a location to save the output file and then it starts to render. Here I speed up the video but it took less than 20 minutes to render this shot. As you just saw, the output size was 6K. So spending less than 20 minutes means you can save a lot of time and you prevent too much hardware usage for achieving a high quality result. So these are the reasons I highly recommend this rendering engine. Now let's take a look at the final result. I think the render quality is very good. All the details are rendered clearly and there isn't any noise. Let me zoom in more to see how does it look. I think it's pretty good. Let's get back to the 3ds Max to show you more options. As you see here, there are two main options available, the stop and sync buttons. One of the coolest features of this engine is that I can actually change anything in 3ds Max scene and just by pressing the sync button, send that part into the D5 in order to update that scene. Let me make a major change like the floor material to see how this sync feature works. Ok, I load the very material library and assign one of them into the floor plane.
Now I press update to apply that change. It takes a few seconds in both applications to update that scene inside the file render. Okay, there we go. So you can apply any changes to your scene and update the D5 using the sync button. And the last thing, I would like to mention that D5 render is a standalone application. It means it doesn't need the 3D's Max to be open like V-Ray engine. You can run this engine and render your scene or even create a new scene. Let me show you. First, I'm gonna close both applications. Now I run the D5 render again. In the welcome window, you can load latest scenes you open inside D5 render. Create new empty scene or from model file or you can open previous project you have opened on your hard drive. I'm gonna open my recent project. And there we go. What I can say about this rendering engine is that it's super fast and easy to work with. Gives too many cool features such as different types of lighting, too many high quality materials and different navigation modes. Also the rendering speed is super fast which is one of the main factor for choosing a rendering engine. That's it for me guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to be notified about the next video. See you in the next video. Have fun!